Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. God bless you for coming. As you know, this is God's time. This is the time we come to meet Him. And so we're going to meet Him this morning. I'm going to kneel. I'll invite you to kneel with me. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. If you'll join me at the altar, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Everybody, every head bowed, every eye closed. <clears throat> As you pray privately, why not thank God for this time of year? Thank Him that He sent Jesus as our Savior. Now why not thank Him for putting in a place where you can come in and experience worship with him. Heavenly Father, we come here so often and our minds are so cluttered that we never see you. And we know that's what we need to do is see you. We never sense you and we know what we really need to do is sense you in our lives. Father, I pray that you would reveal to us that part of ourselves that is displeasing to you so that at this Christmas time we can come before you and repent and ask for forgiveness and be restored to you. We love you, Lord, because you're the only one that's worthy to receive our love and our worship. receive our hearts speak to our hearts today in Jesus name Amen would you sing this with me for he alone is worthy for he alone is worthy for he Stand and sing, oh come all ye faithful. Oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Begin this day by singing joy to the world. The Lord is come. I want to hear you sing it. Our boys and girls are going to come sing for us in a second, but let's sing it together. Debbie? Everybody sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and head and nature sing he rules the world with truth and grace and makes a nation the glories of His righteousness, wonders of His love, and wonders of His love, and wonders, wonders of His love. Thank you. You may be seated.
Jesus. Thank you, boys and girls. As I told them this morning, we're going to sing that song on Christmas morning, and I want them here so they can lead us out. Happy birthday, Jesus. Let us not forget whose birthday it is. Today, we're glad to have a, a guest with us, someone that's well-known in these parts. He just preached here just a couple weeks ago, pastored at XYZ Church over there for a few years, just a few days, 40 years. And so, Brother Glenn Nice, we're so glad to have you today. Would you... Lead us in this time of prayer, please. Would you pray for us? Father God, we thank you for the joy that we have as a Christian. Lord, we know that you're here with us today. You're by each and every one of us. And Lord, we thank you for this time that we can just uh, pause and give you praise and honor and glory. Lord, for what you do each and every day for each of us. We thank you for Jesus that died on that cross. Lord, we thank you for the resurrection. Lord, we thank you for the pastor of this church and other churches that are spreading the gospel. We pray for each one here that will accept and realize that Jesus speaks us, to us through uh, people. And we thank you for that. And I just ask his blessings upon this place and a blessing upon us as we come to receive what you have to give us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, it's one of my favorite times of this service. is when we quote scripture together. Our scripture this month is Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5. Would you read that with me, please? But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Galatians 4, 4 and 5. Let's stand and read that one more time, if you would, and I'd like you to read it with the gusto, like you, when you go to a ball game, for crying out loud. This is about the birth of Jesus. Read it with me. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons. Galatians 4 and 5. As you know today, as most of you know, that I'm preaching on the three wise men. In that vein, let's, let's sing, We Three Kings of Orion Ard. Now here's what I want to tell you. There is no biblical foundation for there only being three kings. We got that from gold, frankincense, and mirth. Uh, do we have that ready? Let's sing it, Debbie. Sing it with us. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, oh, star of one, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever see, never over us all to reign. Oh, oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceed, guide us to thy perfect light. 
Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God, sacrifice. Replies, O star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, just to thy perfect light. For the last congregational song, I thought we'd do something just a little bit different this morning. One of my favorite songs, in fact, when I was in school, uh, we had a book in the library that you could play the piano, piano book. One of my favorite songs in there was not in the Baptist Assembly at the time, was What Child Is This? You can go ahead and put those words up there. I want us to sing that this morning, but we're going to do it a little differently. You know, a lot of folks uh, uh, these days are coming out with a product, projects that we call acoustic projects. And so I'm just going to um, pick our guitar a little bit, and I want us to do it. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap in sleep? Who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our
And he's lying in a manger down the road There's a new kid in town But he's just another baby, I suppose Heaven knows There's a new kid in town Here in Bethlehem I see you've traveled far Bearing treasure And you say these things are for The new king's pleasure I've heard that a king might come but until now there hasn't been one There's a new kid in town And he's lying in a manger down the road There's a new kid in town But he's just another baby, I suppose Heaven knows there's a new kid in town Here in Bethlehem There's a new kid in town and he's lying in a manger down the road And there's a new kid in town But he's just another baby, I suppose Heaven knows There's a new kid in town Here in Bethlehem If you will, go ahead and take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. I have a friend. I say a friend. He's a ministerial friend. Uh, you have to understand in ministerial Brother Glenn understands this. You go to ministerial meetings, you go to conventions and all, and you see people that the only time you see them is at convention, they become friends there. It's not like your wife and go out to lunch with them. It's not like they come to your house, but you're friends. But a guy named David Dykes, Dr. David Dykes, pastor at Green Acres, the great Green Acres Baptist Church in Tyler, Texas, for many, many years, over 30 years, now he didn't catch up with you, Glenn. I know it was 30 years that he pastored out there. And uh, one Christmas he stood to read a story. And I was trying to decide if I wanted to read that story or not. And I'm thinking, if he, think, if he did it, I can do it. Okay? Are you up for just a little bit of humor? If you're not, it's okay. It'll be over in a second. It's a note to all southern U.S. residents. And it's from Santa Claus. And it, uh, the subject is replacement Santa Claus. And this is from Santa Claus. I regret to inform you that immediate, effective immediately due to the growing population, I will no longer be able to serve the southern United States on Christmas Eve. However, I have provided a replacement for you. My third cousin, Bubba Claus. 
His side of the family is from the South Pole, and there are a few differences that you'll need to know between us. Number one, instead of milk and cookies, Bubba Claus prefers that you leave an RC cola and pork rinds. Number two, <laughs> Bubba Claus' sled is pulled by flying coon dogs instead of reindeer. Santa made the mistake of loaning him a reindeer once, and now that reindeer's head overlooks Bubba's fireplace. <laughs> this is serious business in the South. The classic movies such as Miracle on 34th Street and It's a Wonderful Life will be replaced by Boss Hog Saves Christmas and Smokey and the Bandit Part 4. Santa Claus, Bubba Claus doesn't wear a belt. Be sure your wife and kids turn the other way when he bends over to put the presents under the tree. <laughs> I almost left that one off, but decided I better not. Uh, the truth is, is that we, we come to Christmas time and it's a, it's a fun time. At the same time, it's a serious time. The title of this message, as you know, is the original Star Trek. The original Star Trek. Now that pops into many people's minds. Remember these words? To seek out new life and boldly go where no one has gone before. Now for a Trekkie like me, I happen to know that September the 8th, 1966 was the first time that Jim Kirk spoke those immortal words on a TV screen. And since 1966, almost every captain of the Starship Enterprise, Kirk, Picard, Archer, Pike, and even more, have spoken those words to us. And I, I admit I'm a Star Trek fan. But those words, seek out new life, boldly go where no one has gone before, have always intrigued me. Why? Because I see these concepts in spiritual terms. Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, a gift of God to the world so that he could save the people of the world who had fallen into sin, who had fallen into darkness. Jesus came to rescue us. And when he came to rescue us, when we make that step to follow Christ, our lives change. And if there's someone here who you've never made that step of inviting Christ into your life, I didn't ask you about joining the church. I didn't ask you about, about uh, being a part of Sunday school, although all of that will probably become a part of your life. When you receive Jesus, your life changes forever. And from the time you receive Jesus and you start following him in his steps to the time you take that ultimate step into heaven, you're seeing in a new life. You're boldly going where no one or few have gone before. The Christian life is a never-ending adventure. And as I read this story in Matthew 2 about the Magi, the King, we sing about them being wise men. I believe they took that original Star Trek, and I believe we can learn some things today from them. If you found Matthew 2, would you stand to honor the reading of God's holy word? After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, wise men, magi, came from the east, Excuse me, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star, my translation says, at its rising. Does everybody know where stars and suns rise in the east? We saw his star at its rising and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed. King James says, troubled. You know what that means? He was so upset that he was pacing around the throne room because another king was in town. 
deeply disturbed in all of Jerusalem with him. So he assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people and asked them where the Christ would be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because this is what was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Ju Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, because out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly, secretly, summoned the wise men. Now you need to get this picture. He secretly summons them because he was trying to pull the wool over their eyes, and he asked them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report back to me so I can too can go and worship him. After hearing the king, they went on their way. And there it was, the star they had seen at its rising. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. It really was a young child. Jesus was now about... Uh, 12 to 18 months old. And when they saw the star, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that today that the truths of this story will so permeate our lives that it will activate our faith and activate our lives in ways that we have never imagined. If there's one that doesn't know Jesus, has never followed Jesus, may today be the time that they get involved in following him. If there are those whose hearts have grown cold, I pray that you will renew our passion today. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Above all other things, this story should encourage us. These kings set out to find Jesus. These wise men set out to find Jesus. These magi set out to find Jesus, and they found him. It was a trip or a trek. A trek is a hard trip. These guys had probably taken, as we'll say in a minute, probably taken 12 to 18 months and made a difficult journey to come to Jesus. But they found him, and when they found him, they were greatly impacted for the rest of their lives. If we ever find Jesus, our lives will be different. My goal today, this message, is that in the melee of this culture, among the distractions of our society, among uh, the selfishness in this meistic culture. My goal is to help us find Jesus. Find Jesus involves some things. We can learn that. You see it on the screen. It's in your bulletin. The first thing it involves is focus. Focus. You know, we, we know about focus. We get focused on things. In the scripture, the men said, we saw his star and have come. Listen, we didn't just come to find him, Tim. We came to worship him. We know who he is. We came to worship him. Their focus was finding Jesus so that they could worship the Messiah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how focused these wise men were, these kings were, these magi were to take out of their lives six to 18 months to make the journey. They didn't just show up at church on a Sunday. They, they took this time out to follow. Listen, this is crazy. Honey, 
We're leaving town for a while. Where are you going? We're going to follow that star. And they were focused on finding him. They had the particular star. It was the one that they knew would lead them to the promised one of God. They're focused on the star that informed them where the promised king lay. Now let me just say this to you. The birth of Jesus was not hidden. It was not just for a few. But they didn't take, I don't know if you, we don't, I haven't seen them out here. When I lived in town and somebody had a baby, they'd put a stork sign out there and go, it's a boy. There wasn't any sign like that, but here's what I want to tell you. For centuries and centuries, it had been printed in the Old Testament. Everybody had, had access to it, and everybody could read it. Everybody could hear it taught. And now on this night, it's like God put a star out there and said, this is my son. This is where he is. This is where he's laid. This is where he's been born. And you know what? For the people who were paying attention, I'm going to say that again. For the people who were paying attention, for the people who were focusing on God's word, for the people who were focusing on scripture, Jesus was there to be found. The news was out. How often do we miss big news? How often do we miss big news? December 1903, the Wright brothers. Now, does everybody who's studied enough history to know who the Wright brothers are? At least nod your head so I know you're alive, okay? The Wright brothers wrote their, actually they didn't write, they, they sent a telegraph to their sister Catherine, and this is what they said. They said, we have actually flown 120 feet. We will be home at Christmas. And so Catherine was all excited about it, so she carried it to the town newspaper editor and showed it to him. He thought that he probably would want to pick up that story that they had flown. And the newspaper editor looked at it and he said, how nice, the boys are coming home for Christmas. He missed the big story that man could now fly. How often do we miss the big story, the big story, because we're focused on the small stuff. We miss Jesus. Why do we miss Jesus at Christmas? We miss Jesus at Christmas when we focus on the things of the world. We miss Jesus at Christmas when we become self-absorbed. Finding Jesus requires focus even at Christmas. The second thing this trek involves, it involves focus so you'll take the trip. The second thing it involves is forsaking. Oops. Just had a lot of off switches right now because that concept's not really popular today. That's not something we really want to talk about. This term meistic, I used it a while ago. It's not even in the dictionary. We don't like that term. We want to throw it out. It may not be in the dictionary, and you, we may not like it, but it's alive and well on planet Earth today. We might not want to hear it, but this is what Jesus said. If you want to be mine, if you want to follow after me, you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross, and you must follow me. James Merritt outline of that is that you must deny self, die to self, and devote self. I want you to think just for a second, all the forsaking, and we certainly can't get all of it, that these magi, these wise men did, they forsook their lifestyle. They forsook their friends. They forsook their homes. They forsook their families. They forsook their schedules to find a Savior. It was that important to them. Don't forget, 
they're not the only ones. The disciples left their boats, their jobs, their families, and all the rest to follow Jesus. You see, that's what he calls us to do. And if you don't believe that was important to the disciples, when Jesus turned to the disciples in the latter part of his ministry and he said, will you, follow, will you abandon me also? He said, no. And then he said, are you going to abandon me? And he goes, I think it was Peter said, where would we go? Where do we go? We have left all. To follow you. Jesus' call is the same for one and all. It's to follow me. I want to say that again. Jesus' call is to follow me. He gives no other invitation. He didn't invite somebody to come be a Christian. He didn't invite somebody to come be a church member. He didn't invite somebody to come be a preacher or a singer. He didn't invite somebody just to be a deacon. He didn't, what he did, he invited people to follow him. And there's one thing about forsaking. One thing about forsaking, it's a matter of your heart. You nor I will ever f- forsake something we love for something we simply like. 1 John says not to love the world or the things of the world. James gives stronger words and he says to be a friend of the world is to be both an enemy of God and at enmity with God. Brothers and sisters, there are some things that we, the Bible tells us this, there are some things we have to put off There's some things we have to put away. There's some things we have to put down. And there are some things in our life that we have to put to death. That's what the Bible says. If we're going to follow him, if we're going to make this Star Trek like these guys did, it involves focus and it involves forsaking some things. I suspect if I were to hand you a piece of paper and ask you to write down What are some of the things that if Jesus came into your life and walked into your house that he'd immediately tell you to forsake? I expect you've got a couple of things. And you know it. He's calling you to forsake it. The original Star Trek, it involves focus. It involves forsaking. Number three, it involves following. That's obvious. They followed the star. Jesus said, follow me. The truth is is that when the wise men got into Jerusalem, they said, hey, we followed this star. Now, had they not followed the star, they would have been like the rest of the world. Can I say that again? Had they not followed the star that was leading them to Jesus, they would have been just like the rest of the world. I want you to think about this. God had come to earth and the world was too busy to even stop and take note, let alone worship. Are we like that? Are we like that? Oh, Brother Jerry, I'm here this morning. Let me, just because your bottom is in the seat doesn't mean that your heart is before him. You see, it takes following. It takes focus. It takes forsaking. I submit to you that missing God, missing God's Son, happens a lot of times because, because we are not following Jesus. Now, some people will say, oh, Brother Jerry, get on with something else. I'm following Jesus. But here's what I want to tell you. Let's not forget what the prophet said in the Old Testament, what Matthew, I believe Jesus repeated this in the New Testament. He says, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In 
In truth, every person in this room is following something or someone. In order to go the way you're going, you had to focus on something. You probably had to forsake a few things so that you could follow your chosen path. I see Madeline sitting back here. Let me just use her as an illustration. You know, Madeline and a lot of our kids run together. They, and they're good at it, if you don't know. They're really good at it. They win. But they had to focus on that. They had to train. And, and likely, I have not talked to Madeline, so I'm not trying to embarrass her, but I bet all of those girls that run on that team, there have been times that they really wanted to go do something else. But they knew if they were going to win, if they were going to stand on the platform, that they had to focus. They had to forsake those things and they had to focus on what was at hand. Could it be, (laughs) she'll, she'll beat me up later, could it be that a couple of times her mother or her coach or each other, they had to remind the girls that you need to forsake that so that you can follow your dream because only by following your dream are you going to stand on the center pedestal and wear the, and wear the medal. Do you know the same thing applies here? Knowing that Jesus, the promised one of God, was at the end of their journey. They let nothing get, them, get in their way. They focused on the star. They forsook some things that, they were, that were very personal to them so they could follow the star and find Jesus. So the question comes before us for every person in this room, who or what are you following? Who or what do you have your eyes on? Who or what controls your life? Some of you may know the name Eli Black. Most will probably not. He was a businessman in New York City. He's basically known in New York City for two things. Number one, he's known for the multi-million dollar takeover of United Fruits. You need to remember that was late 60s, early 70s. He managed that. He's known for that. The second thing he's known for is he jumped out of the 42nd floor window of the Pan Am building in New York City. Google him if you want to check me out. The article I read ended, as it accounted his life, ended with this sober thought. If you're going to play follow the leader, you better know who you're following. Jesus asks us today, who in the world are you following? What in the world are you following? What are you forsaking? Who are you forsaking? What are you focused on? Who are you focused on? Star Trek involves focus, forsaking, following. Next I find there it involves finding Finding, finding. The only Star Trek, the only trek, the only trail, the only path that is worth taking in this life is one in which you know what is awaiting, what the payoff is on the other end. So the Magi, the king, the wise men knew because the prophets said it. And they never faltered in the journey and And the truth is the results of their seeking and their focus and their forsaking and their following is that they found Jesus. Isaiah says to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Jeremiah 29 tells us that we can seek the Lord and find the Lord when we seek him with part of our hearts. Is that what it says? When we seek him with all of our hearts, not just part of our heart, I have to tell you, God's been wrestling a a sermon thought in my mind. 
And that is, what, what, what phrases would we never say, but our lies teach? What would we say? We would never say, you may hear this again down the, down the road, we would never say, Lord, you got two hours on Sunday morning, and that's it. Hello? We would never say, Lord, I know what the Bible says about tithing, but it's in my pocket. We would never say, being faithful is what I say it is, instead of what you say it is. But what do our lives say? You see, when we find Jesus, things are different. Some people never find Jesus because they're looking in all the wrong places. They're looking in all the wrong ways. There are many people, maybe some in this room, who are trying to make Jesus into what they want him to be. The arrogance of the American culture is trying to sell us a Jesus who is nothing but love. Now, is Jesus love? Yes, he is. But it's love as he defines it, not as we define it. Because he's love, they tell us that anything we do should be fine and accepted and he'll see us just like we are. If you just want to give Jesus the leftovers of your life, it'll be okay. If you just want your ticket punched, he's the great ticket puncher. The sad truth is this, the Bible knows no Jesus like that. People who choose to believe that stuff will never find or discover God's Son. Now they may find something that they can call Jesus. But you don't get to define who Jesus is. He's already defined by his life and by this book. If you're ever tempted to follow that line of thinking, remember this. The Bible tells us clearly, Hosea teaches us that God can and God will withdraw from us to the point that we cannot find him because sin is a big deal. To God. It cost him the death of his only son. His way, his truth, his life is the only way. He's God, we're not. He's worth finding. And the eternal truth is this. Are you listening? Our Lord Jesus is available to everyone who seeks him. He says, anybody that comes to me, I won't cast them out. It involves focus, forsaking, following, finding. One more. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. But we Baptists, we Americans, we might better learn this one. It involves falling. Verse 11 is the picture Entering the house, they found him. They saw the child with Mary, his mother. And here is the falling, falling to their knees. They worshiped him. This is the forgotten part of the trek. When they came into the presence of baby Jesus, they fell on their faces in humility, in devotion, in adoration, in reverence, and in worship. You may not like this. You may be too proud to do this, but let me just tell you something. Is that it's all through Scripture when humankind comes into the presence of deity... The first thing is humility. Isaiah 6, I saw the Lord is high and lifted up. The train of his veil filled the temple. 
It doesn't say that he fell on his face, but he said, man, I am unworthy, I am unclean, I am undone, and I can see Isaiah as each word comes out of his mouth going just a little bit lower, and it's not only me, I live, I live among a people that's just like me. Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus took off his earthly form, Moses and Elijah appeared with him. They wound Peter, James, and John, the A-team, by the way, wound up on their faces. We don't get this. But falling down in worship, kneeling before him in worship, is a call. It's a sign of respect. To boldly go where no one has gone. I can take you back to the Old Testament where God rarely took anybody the same way twice. He always took them someplace they hadn't gone before. To, te- to seek out new life. I want you to think about those phrases. To boldly go where no one's gone before. And to seek out new life. Think that independently of that TV show. Part, part of the issue among us in America is that church members believe it is good enough to be like their predecessors. <laughs> I want to say that again. Part of the problem in the American church with American Christianity is that church members think it's good enough to be like their predecessors. Brothers and sisters, I was raised in a Christian home, Christian family, and I love my predecessors, but that bar is way too low. We have been called to take this journey to find Jesus. And go all in with Jesus. We focus. We forsake. We follow the things of this world so that we can find him and so that we can fall before him in worship. You'll never be stronger than when you're in worship. Pastor friend that I was serving with when I was a uh, music director, he wrote this, he wrote this course It's not so bad when you stumble if you fall on your knees in prayer. The Star Trek will end with you and me on our knees before him. Would you bow your heads with me? As the music plays, is God speaking to you? If he is speaking to you, would you respond to him? Heavenly Father, would you look inside each heart here? And if there's someone that doesn't know you, would you lead them down this trek to find Jesus? If there's someone here who has trusted Jesus and has followed Jesus but has stepped away for whatever reason, maybe struggle, maybe disappointment, maybe hurt, I pray that you'd speak to them right now. Speak to our hearts, Lord. You continue to pray. The music continues to play. I'm here. If you want me to pray with you, I'll be glad to. If you just want to come to the altar, you come to the altar. Yeah. Is God speaking to you? Respond.
Heavenly Father, for this day we say thank you. You have been so good to us by sending Jesus into our world and into our lives. We ask, Lord, that you take control of whatever part of our heart that we've not given to you. And when you take control of it, I pray, Lord, that you will make us into your image. I pray that as we come together and we, and we meet with you, that we'll become more like you. I thank you for this congregation, and I pray for an exciting Christmas season. In Jesus' name, amen. I have several announcements that I need to make. First of all, <clears throat> if you're on the finance team, finance committee, uh, Brian, I think they gave you that side, okay? And uh, um, if you gave me your name and you purchased a ticket, there's only 30 of you, for the Chris Tomlin concert, I need to meet with you. We've had a few developments. I need to meet with you right over here uh, after the service. And for that reason, I'm going to ask to be excused from the door today. I apologize. Um, tonight at 6 o'clock, our choir will be joining with the choir at Calvary and, and presenting a Christmas program. I'll just tell you that I've been the rehearsal accompanist for many of the rehearsals for our choir. And uh, uh, this is, you will be blessed tonight. If you'll, it's not going to be, it's not a long program, but it's going to be a great program. And I, I pray that you'll be here tonight. Then uh, on Tuesday night, we have planned the women's ministry Christmas swap. Excuse me, cookie swap. We're not going to swap Christmases. We're going to swap cookies. Um, I'm looking back at our women's ministry director, hoping I don't say something wrong. Uh, is there something you need to say, Miss Deborah? Here's the thing, be bad weather Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, and so Deborah's got her eye on that. Uh, I would tell you to watch Facebook, but with the, our great connections out here, it may be this time next year when you get on Facebook, okay? I guess, Beth, if something goes wrong Tuesday, we feel like we, have to, we can send out a phone tree. We send out a, a, a call. And so, but if you think, if, you, if the weather's getting bad and you think there may be, have to do something else, feel free to call us, and you have most of our phone numbers, and uh, uh, call us. Don't call us on our cell phones, because all you're going to get is, I cannot complete this call as dialed right now. So, uh, uh, I'm going to give you a reason to be thankful, is that... Uh, um, Friday, I got a call from Beth. I'm normally out on Friday, and she said, we just got an email from Pearlcom. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is it's only for our Pounds Road house, so I called Kevin promptly and told him he was fired because he, had, he was going to get fiber before I got fiber. That was not I'm just joking. Don't anybody go crazy, all right? But uh, uh, it, it's headed this way, and, and a lot of things will be easier when that, that's just a little uh, logistical thing. Um, we have kids basketball coming up. And uh, um, sign-up's going pretty well. We, we put it up on Facebook and on our webpage. Our webpage is newhopefoxworth.org. And you can search. It's, I think it's at New Hope Foxworth on the, on the um, Facebook page. But there's a place there to sign up. If you have not signed up your child online, Brent, give me this. Any child grades one through six wanting to play basketball, please fill out a form located on the table in the back and place it in the offering box. Now, I want to say that again so I'm not unclear. If you registered online, you're registered. You don't have to do that. But if you uh, have a child that's not been registered online, there's some forms in the back. If you know of someone wanting to play, let them know they can go to the church Facebook page, website, and sign up. The deadline for signing up is next Sunday, the 18th, by 1 o'clock. 
I love Brent's precision. But let me tell you why it's 1 o'clock. Let me tell you why I'm by 1 o'clock. Because later that afternoon, the coaches are going to get together and start doing the teams. So we need everybody's name. So if you know some, some that would like to play, please uh, let them know. I will tell you, I may not. I've lost Terry Lynn. They leave? Are they in the back? She's in the back. Uh, she told me that we had Angel Tree yesterday, and we had four families to come. Uh, Sherman also told me and said they had a great time with those folks, so thanks for your help with that. There are many announcements in here. I pray that you will take a look, and uh, I, I'm going to remind you of the Christmas card. Uh, what we do is we put our Christmas cards in the little bin back here, and we take that money and give it to Lottie Moon. So don't forget to support Lottie Moon. We're about 30% of our Lottie Moon Christmas goal uh, for international missions, and our goal is $6,000. Um, I am going to remind you, because I don't want you to forget, on Christmas weekend, two weekends from now, we will have a Christmas Eve service at 6, 6, 6 or 6.30? 6 o'clock. Six o'clock, there we go. And so, and then we have our service on Sunday morning, Christmas Day at 10, and that's all we're going to have today, and so we hope you'll be here, all right? I'm going to remind the young people that they got to lock in on Friday night the 30th, Friday night the 30th, so you can see Ethan for that. All right, any other announcements? Y'all look so excited. Here's what we're going to do. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Go ahead, Lucy. I got the microphone, I'll, I'll try to tell them, is that this is a happy birthday Jesus Christmas tree, and we have cards in the back like the cards you see suspended here, and the, and the goal is to write messages, happy birthday messages to Jesus, and then come time on the tree, and uh, so we can enjoy them this time. Your, your goal is to have the tree filled, correct? Okay, all right. Let's stand together if you will. Just give me a chord there, Debbie. Let's sing Joy to the World. Joy to the world is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart pair Him rule. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature. God bless you. Have a great day.